Good afternoon, everybody. Man, I'm so glad you've decided to join us today, wherever you are, and whatever time of day it is. I was talking to a fellow uh, earlier this morning that doesn't go to our church, and I said he was asking about our church, and I said, hey, you can join us uh, twice a week. You can join our Sunday morning service. You usually put it out on Monday sometime, and, and you can come right on out to church with us. And then at some point during the week, the midweek, we'll do a little uh, visit with you right there wherever you are. So as long as you're on... Uh, Facebook, you can find us and and, uh, and just join us. And I'm so thankful that you have. Let me reflect a little bit about the weekend. Uh, just an incredible week last week. Great weekend. I'm so proud of our guys. We took, I believe, we took 16 guys down to uh, the Atlanta area and went to a men's conference and uh, had the guys talk a little bit about that Sunday morning and share some thoughts and maybe some things that they they got from the Lord uh, through the men's conference. And I, I, I'm very uh, Boy, I, I get emotional. I'm very proud of of these gentlemen uh, for for being willing to grow and go and, and learn and be become disciples, really. And that's a, that's a big part of who I, what I think God is doing here at our church is making disciples. And we had we had all ages. You know, we had 60s and 50s and 40s and 30s and 20s and even a teenager to go along with us. And I was just really thankful for our guys, proud of our men, and, and uh, thank you for participating with that. And then Sunday was a great morning. We, we did our financial report, uh, and Kathy and the finance team just did an incredible job. I hope you uh, you were helped by that presentation. And uh, we also followed up a little bit with our ministry directory. We want to continue to do that for the next few weeks. And if you have not found your place in this uh, this uh, church, and remember our, our theme is kind of, uh, our January theme was, uh, one body, many members, one purpose. And so that's kind of the, the concept there. And Still having folks turn in uh, little cards saying, this is what I want to do, this is what I want to be a part of, I want to be involved. And then Sunday night was our Super Bowl party. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, now, the game didn't go exactly like we were hoping, uh, but everything else, the food was incredible. The, the, the decorations here, these ladies just did an amazing job. And, and gentlemen as well. Uh, food was great. It was just a fun night for our church. Great turnout. And uh, as always, our church really responds. And so the Super Bowl party was just another win for our church. And, and uh, I loved it. It was great fun. As far as this week, a couple things coming up. Uh, this Saturday night. Now, this Sunday is Valentine's Day. So always, especially gentlemen, you need to remember that. February 14th. Um, today's the 10th, so uh, Saturday night we're going to go up to a restaurant called Pier 51 Seafood Restaurant. It's in Concord, and we have posted the address. Uh, it's right across from First Assembly in, in that uh, center uh, area there, and easy to find, easy to get to. Uh, about 5, 30, 6 o'clock if you'd like to join us, and, and it's not real formal. You know, you don't have to sign up or, or, or anything like that. Just come. We'll have an area we can be together as a church family and order off the menu. And, you know, if you don't have plans, uh, come on out and bring your date and uh, have a little seafood with us. It's going to be a fun time. I love getting together with our church, and there's usually food involved. So I think that's a good thing. That's biblical, too, by the way. Um, we, we break a lot of bread together. So we're excited about that. And then, uh, of course, this Sunday will be Valentine's Day. And we have a special message, some great music. I'm excited about our music for this Sunday. Um, for this month, uh, the 27th is our next men's breakfast. The last Saturday of every month is pretty much our men's breakfast, and so we want to want you to plan on that. Uh, March 5th, I want ladies, I want you to put that date down on, in, on your calendars. That we have a ladies conference planned. It's a little day trip, and it'll be Saturday, March 5th. And uh, we have some flyers with that information. It's on Facebook. Uh, Becky Rice is kind of heading, heading that up for us with information. And so, ladies, I want you to check into that March 5th to the Ladies Conference, and, and you can get some more information. But uh, we're excited. March going to be a great month. We have a, a very special, I think the 13th, we have a Youth Sunday planned. And you'll hear from uh, Stephen that day who works with our teenagers. And we'll, you'll hear from a lot of our teenagers and, and college-age students. And, and uh, that'll be their Sunday. They'll do, do pretty much church for us that day. And then just some other neat things. I, I, believe, I believe Easter's sneaking up on us. Uh, probably the last Sunday in March. And so our first birthday party is coming up. The Community Church of Mount Pleasant is almost one year old. So we're going to have a special uh, event in, in uh, April, and we'll be telling you more about that. We're going to celebrate. 
is a first birthday party is a pretty big one, and that's what we're going to do, okay? So uh, just some fun things coming up. I'd like for you to uh, uh, follow me along if you want to today. First John chapter 3. I want to read this passage. <clears throat> and, and the thought, it, it, suddenly I'm going to talk about what is real love. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of concepts of love today in our society. Most of them are probably not good. Uh, many of them are not accurate. And, and so I, I want, I have a, I'm really, uh, the Lord has really pushed on my heart uh, a couple of passages for Sunday that I want us to all see together about love and, and what God's idea of love is, real love. And so let's, let's look at that on this Sunday, but it's Valentine's Day. But today I want to talk about love in, in the context of 1 John chapter 3. And, and uh, just some things that I'll point out. But let's read first of all. I want to read verse 11. I want to read some verses following. So just uh, 1 John chapter 3, starting verse 11. Listen to how many times the word love is mentioned, and then we'll get some, some really neat descriptions and explanations of love. Chapter, 11, or chapter 3 of 1 John, verse 11. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning that we should love one another. You know, that's, that's, that is an ageless message. The message from the beginning, that we should love one another. A recurring theme throughout the scriptures is you ought to love one another. You should care for one another. You should love one another. That's what we see here in uh, verse 11. Verse 12, Not like Cain, who was of that wicked one, the enemy, and slew his own brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brothers were righteous. So, that's not love. That's not brotherly love. Cain slew his own brother because his works were evil. He was jealous, and there was a, the, the first murder. Verse 13, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. Don't be surprised if this world system does not love you and tell you how great you are for being a Christian, for being Christ-like. Don't be surprised. Verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life. The evidence of the fact that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. How, how are they going to know? You, you go to work or you go somewhere and, and you talk to someone and say, yeah, I'm a Christian. And they're like, okay, how will I know that? If you love your brother, and, and not your family brother, your friend, your neighbor, even your enemy. If you love folks, people will know that you are a Christ follower. Verse 14 says, He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. There's not life in him if you don't love people. Verse 15, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know not, you know that no murderer hath eternal. These are strong words. Be careful about. Oh, I just hate that person. I hope that's not true. And if it is, don't say it. Because that's really dangerous. Verse sixteen. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Verse 17, But whoso hath this world's goods, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion, his heart of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God? And how can you say you're of God if you don't love people? It, it's, 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 it's impossible to, to be a Christian and not love people. It's the, the primary evidence of someone who's in Christ is love. Verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. That's probably the central verse here in this chapter. The thought is, don't just talk about it. Anybody can say it. Your love will be proven by your actions. People will know if you really love them by your actions. Wow. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before Him. 
For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him, because we keep His commandments, and do those things which are pleasing in His sight. Verse 23. This is His commandment. Watch this. That we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. That's God's commandment. That's His desire for us, is that we believe in His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandments. Did you notice how many times love is addressed in these few verses? Let me give you a real quick outline here, a quick thought. Number one, we see in verse 11 the message of love. Here it is. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. That's the message of love. So, as you see, talk about Valentine's Day and pick out cards and, and commercials and all these things about love. The message of love is that we love one another. That we love each other. That we love uh, not only our loved ones, but others as well. So number one, the message of love. Number two is found in verse 18. And, and we see here the method of love. Verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. Uh, it, it's not what we say. It's what we do. That's the method of love. The, the message is, well, I love one another. The method is... Love with your actions. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't say something and not follow through. Love is about your actions, not just your words. And then thirdly, we see the model. The model of love in verse 23. So we see the message, the method, now the model in verse 23. This is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. Our model is Jesus. Jesus not only loved us, he, he not only spoke it, He left heaven. He left His home with His Father in heaven. He came to this earth as an alien, as a... a, a, a he, he was just passing through. He wasn't a resident here. He left his home to come here as an alien. And, and he lived here with us. And he, he, he loved us. And he ultimately gave his life on a cross in a humiliating way. He, he not only said it, he did it. He, he didn't just say, I love you. He gave an example of His love by giving His life. Jesus provided for us the model of love. And, and He said also that, that we ought to be willing to give our life for those that we love, just like Jesus did. So, verse 11, the message, love one another. Verse 18, the method, love with your actions. And then finally, the model of love in verse 23, love like Jesus. You know, I, I, so many times I don't. I, I want to. I want to love people like Jesus did. I want to give and serve and, and, and be all things to all people. And, and, and I, I really have a desire to, but I fall short. And you probably have, probably do too. And people that we love and respect are probably going to fail on occasion. But if we want to really be like Jesus... We do that by loving others. It, it's the, the number one evidence that someone is, is in Christ is that they love each other. They love one another. So as a church, what does that mean for me as a church? We love folks. We, we don't, we don't uh, hurt and find fault and criticize and gossip and do damage and do harm to other people. That's not love. Be careful to not say something and not follow through. That's not love. So as a church, we, we, we love Jesus. We love our Heavenly Father. As an evidence of that, we're going to love other people. We're going to love each other. It's easy to love somebody that loves us. Not always easy to love someone that doesn't love us. Maybe somebody that's ugly to us, hurtful to us, causes us pain, 
But the real evidence of Jesus in us is the fact that we can love one another. So there's a little concise message on love from 1 John chapter 3. Uh, don't miss Sunday. I'm going to follow up a little bit on that and we'll talk some more about what, it, what real love is from the scriptures. Not my opinion, because that doesn't really matter, but what God says. This is the powerful, life-changing Word of God. Don't miss Sunday. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you have a great week. It's cool out there. Stay warm. Uh, we're praying for you. We love you. Uh, we'll see you on Sunday. Bring somebody with you. God bless you.